a poster presentation by David Hong with data from the dose escalation cohorts of the SURPASS trial is now available online at the virtual SITSI meeting. Today, I'll describe these data in a bit more depth and outline our plans going forward. I would refer you to slide two for our disclaimer language. We're encouraged by the early data we've seen in this phase one trial. We believe the next generation ADP A2M4 CD8 product is active. As of the data cut off for the SITSI presentation, we had two confirmed resist responses. One at a billion cells, which is a lower dose from those required to achieve responses with the first generation product. Also, we saw initial tumor reductions in five out of six of the first patients treated. These data support continued investigation of the next generation SPEAR T cells, focusing enrollment for the SURPASS trial on patients with gastroesophageal, head and neck, lung, and bladder cancers. We will also initiate a phase two trial with this next generation product for patients with gastroesophageal cancers next year. I'd like to briefly describe the design of this trial and provide a little background on this next generation product. The SURPASS trial is the first clinical trial with our next generation SPEAR T cells targeting MAGE A4, known as ADP A2M4 CD8, that co-expresses CD8 alpha along with the engineered TCR directed against MAGE A4. This trial is designed to evaluate safety and efficacy. The figure on the right illustrates that co-expression of CD8 is intended to achieve greater cytotoxic function of CD4 positive or helper T cells by enabling them to kill cancer targets while still maintaining their helper function. Preclinical data we presented at AACR last year support this, and we saw that CD4 cells targeting MAGE A4 that also have CD8 not only killed MAGE A4 target cells, but they also secreted more cytokines and chemokines, the so-called helper function of these cells, that potentially serves to recruit more immune cells into the tumor site and increase responses. The SURPASS trial utilizes a modified three plus three dose escalation design. But unlike our other phase one trials, there are only two dose escalation cohorts. In the first two cohorts, we treated patients with a predefined stagger between patients and dosing groups to evaluate safety. To be eligible, patients have to be HLA AO2 positive with advanced cancers that express the MAGE A4 protein. T cells from patients are isolated, transduced with a lentiviral vector containing the MAGE A4 TCR and CD8 alpha, and then expanded. Prior to spear T cell infusion, patients receive a lymphodepletion regimen of cyclophosphamide and fludarabine. After spear T cell infusion, patients are followed for safety and anti-tumor response using RESIST 1.1 criteria until disease progression. The data cutoff for this presentation was October 1st and includes six patients from the first two dose escalation cohorts who received doses of up to 1.2 billion and 6 billion transduced cells, respectively. There were patients with multiple tumor types, two with esophagogastric junction cancer, or EGJ, and one patient each with myxoid round cell liposarcoma, ovarian, head and neck, and esophageal cancers. Patients ranged in age from 31 to 71 years. Most patients had an ECOG score of one, and all had received at least three prior lines of therapy. This table shows adverse events that occurred in more than one patient with AEs of interest highlighted by the red boxes that had been captured as of the data cutoff. The most common adverse events were leukopenia, lymphopenia, and neutropenia, reflective of the lymphodepletion regimen they received. Most adverse events were consistent with those typically experienced by cancer patients undergoing cytotoxic chemotherapy, or cancer immunotherapy. CRS of any grade had occurred in four out of six patients, none of which were grade three or higher. No DLTs had been reported at the time of data cutoff, 
and one SAE of CRS was reported in a patient in cohort two that was considered related to T cells. No other SAEs had been reported. This slide shows the tumor responses observed. As the data cut off, there were two confirmed resist responses, one in a patient with head and neck cancer that lasted until around week 12 with a 63% reduction in target lesions. The other response was in a patient with EGJ cancer, which lasted beyond week 36 with a 51% reduction in target lesions. Importantly, although not all reaching a resist response, five out of six patients experienced initial reductions in tumor size. Taken together with the data we saw from the first generation phase one trial, we remain confident that MAJ4 is an attractive target across multiple tumor types, addressable with our highly active SPEAR T cells. These data continue to support enrollment in the continuing expansion phase of the SURPASS trial and the planned phase two trial in gastroesophageal cancers based on the data from the three patients on the right with the green stars demonstrating tumor reductions. These figures show in vitro killing analyses of the manufactured product from four patients. For this assay, cells are sorted from the manufactured product and co-cultured with MAJ4 expressing target cells that also express green fluorescent protein or GFP. The y-axis represents how many green target cells are alive and the x-axis is time. In each case, the CD4 cells also expressing CD8, shown in orange, kill MAJ4 expressing cells in vitro as effectively as CD8 control cells, shown in blue, which supports the increased potency of this next generation of product. This further confirms the preclinical data we reported last year at AACR. In conclusion, most adverse events were consistent with those typically experienced by cancer patients undergoing cytotoxic chemotherapy or cancer immunotherapy. The emerging waterfall plot is very encouraging and indicative of an active product with two resist responses and five out of six patients demonstrating initial tumor reductions. We're focused on enrolling patients with gastroesophageal, head and neck, lung, and bladder cancers, indications for which spear T cells targeting MAJ4 have already shown promise. We're also planning to start a phase two trial with this next generation product in patients with gastroesophageal cancers that will initiate next year. I believe that our SPEAR T cells targeting MAJ4 represent a groundbreaking opportunity and have the potential to benefit many people with cancer. We look forward to discussing this and other topics in more depth at our upcoming Investor Day scheduled for November 20th. Lastly, I want to offer our appreciation for the investigators and their teams at our study centers, and especially the patients, their caregivers, and loved ones who participate in our trials, particularly in these challenging times.